Viewers like you make this program possible. Support your local PBS station. When you had your American friends coming home, or your lunches when you brought them to school, were they excited about the Guyanese food, or did they smell funny? How did they respond to the it, curry? It was like embarrassing to introduce <laughs> them to what we used to eat. Yeah. But today, it's like you love it, and you're sharing it with all your friends. Like and it's the coolest food, yeah, food yeah, right? The coolest food around. I was like the first Guyanese kid in these schools. Oh, cool. Yeah, so people, I had problems selling where I was from. They're like, where are you from? Where, you, I'm where from is Guyana? Guyana. What's going on? And they on? say, oh, Ghana. I said, no, <laughs> not Ghana, Guyana. Why do you think Queens is also such an immigrant friendly or immigrants come to Queens? What do you think it's in Queens? The name Queens sounds good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Of course, it's kind of like nice. Yes, yes The Bronx right? sounds a little tough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brooklyn yeah. sounds a little tough. <laughs> But Queen sounds more... I love that. It brings everybody together. Coming to America, <laughs> I love that. Oh, Queen yeah. sounds nice. I'm Chef Marcus Samuelson, and as an immigrant born in Ethiopia and raised in Sweden, food to me has always told a deeper, more personal story. It's a path to culture, identity, and history. Now it's a party. I'm going across the country to learn more about America's immigrant communities and culinary traditions see how food connects us all across the United States. In a weird way, I think Queens is the heart of New York City. People fly in and out of Queens all the time, and it's this community where people just drive by to get to Manhattan. But then, so many jewels of what we consider is New York comes from Queens. Think about the history of jazz. Louis Armstrong lived there, Ella lived there. The hip hop history too. Run DMC, Nas. We got the food. Greek, Mexican, Thai, Chinese, Indian. It's this mosaic, beautiful world. I stop at the A train, Richmond Hill. And you can kind of start feeling when you get off the subway, Rockaway Beach, it gets windy. You know you're kind of close to the ocean. You feel planes are coming over from JFK. We're in Little Guyana. Guyana is part of South America, but it's English speaking, and the culture of Guyana is very much Caribbean. One of the cool things with the Indo Guyanese community is really a story of immigration and migration two times. The ancestor were from India, but the motherland is Guyana. And now they made Queens their home and started to set up this incredible rich community. And someone like myself that, you know, through adoption was born in Ethiopia, but raised in Sweden and from Sweden settled in America. I can kind of relate to this try and figure out where do I belong? Where do you get your sense of self from? And how do I start my new ritual and call it home? Hey, man, hey, how are Marcus, you? Marcus, good to see you. Good to see yeah. you. Welcome to Richmond, Lil. So where are we, man? So this is a, a guy in the neighborhood. It's okay, on cool. um, Liberty Avenue, and here you find uh, fresh markets of fresh fruits and vegetables and fish, and lots of interesting yeah. restaurants and people. So this is basically like, what, Fifth Avenue here? This is where everything's yeah, going on? Yeah, this is a prime. So show me around. Jeff Raymond is an amazing guy. I've known Raymond forever. In the late 90s, early 2000s, Raymond worked with me and Raymond taught me a lot of stuff about flavors and ingredients that were mostly Caribbean or Latin that I had no clue about. Raymond is also the only person that I know from Guyana. Guyana is a melting pot of culture. So you have the Portuguese, you have the Dutch, you have the Indian, Asians, and Africans, uh, Africans and yeah. the natives. And so you have all these uh, great flavors and uh, food and textures. It sounds like a good curry. Yeah. Right? It sounds like uh, a good curry. Great curries. When did cooking come into your life? I started to cook like back home with my mom. She had a roadside stand. She sells at the market every Saturday, yes. so she'll start preparing these specialty like Ooh. Solara, Bygany, which is fried eggplant, you know, turmeric Ooh. batter. Culinary school already started back home then. Right? Yeah, yeah. If you trace your roots as chefs, yeah. where we started to cook, I started to cook while going to the market with my mom. Going through the market in Guyana, it just lights up the senses. And Liberty Avenue reminds me of being on, 
on Market Street in what Diana. Is... Walking here with your aunt and your mommy when you were a kid, like, what would we buy? What would she pick up? She would come here and probably uh, pick up okra, okra for fish curry, yeah. uh, green mango, and um, there's long beans over and there. And long beans, and... yes. Of course, you have your taro root over there? Yeah, this is a, a farm of taro. It's an edo. It's creamy, it's sweet. Um, you put it in curries, stews. Mm. This you find in all over Africa as well. Yeah. It's so similar. Some of the ingredients are African, because it's tropical, yeah. really. And then we got fresh turmeric, fresh tumeric, of course. That's for your curry. Yes. This is what makes the, the curry uh, yellow. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. That bright orange. Oh, yeah. This is a bitter melon, which is amazing. Oh, I love you got this. the bitter melon? Yeah. I love bitter melon. Yeah. It's bitter and it's good for you. You could stuff it with like a ground beef yeah. and um, put in a curry. Nice. Yeah. This is also ingredients you would see in Chinatown. Yeah. And also in a Caribbean market, right? Yes. So your mom, your family, you would cook both Portuguese, Indian, yeah. Asian, Chinese. Chinese. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I knew you grew up with some uh, delicious food. I grew uh, up with yeah. potato and herring. <laughs> you grew up with much better food than me. Guyanese heritage is a bit complex. Guyana, as most of the Caribbean, shares this history of enslavement of African people. And then that was replaced by a system of indentured servitude. So about 150,000 Indians were brought over to take over the same plantations and rice fields that African peoples were toiling on. And with that Indian population also came a small number of Chinese and Portuguese people. But it all stems from the export of labor from other lands into Guyana and people, you know, starting a life in this place and deciding to stay. Guyana, as beautiful as, you know, my birthplace is, it is one of the poorest countries in that part of the world. In the 1950s and the 1960s, Guyana was going through its first independent elections. And so you couple that political tension and chaos with poverty. And what you found was a lot of Guyanese families migrating to New York, setting up and settling on one street. Where are we now? Uh, this is Sybil's Bakery and Restaurant, so there's baked goods and curries and oh, all nice. kinds of prepared food for lunch and dinner. So then those are Indian or Chinese? Indian. It's West Indian. I think for any immigrant community, to start a business was very often the necessity because maybe you couldn't get another job. Thank you. And when you look at Sybil's Bakery, for me, it's a quintessential queen story, it's a quintessential immigrant story, and also family business. 38, please, number 38. Time is 38. 38, come on yes, up, sir. Yes, you gotta be fast, you gotta be fast. <laughs> Welcome to Sybil's. Thank you very much. So let me have a, a Guyanese chicken patty. That's that, yeah. the chicken Woo! patty. So what do you think? Mm, it's beautiful. This is mom's recipe, right? Yeah, yeah. My name is Vibert Cookie Bernard. Here at Sybil's Bakery and Restaurant, which is like the beginning of the business district on Liberty Avenue. So my mom's name is Sybil Bernard. She started this business back in 1978. It was kind of drug infested area and really run down. And now it's totally transformed into a beautiful community. And I feel proud that we were part of bringing it to where it is today. My mom is of the Indian descent, but she grew up in a mixed race home. And she also has siblings that are of Chinese descent. So she's learned all these ethnic dishes and that's what we bring here. When you were coming up, did your family used to come out to Sybil's and, and, and this is one of the staple places, Yeah, right? you come out here to get bread and yeah. on the weekends, always come out to Sybil's. So what do we got here? This is the dal puri. Ooh. It smells and, uh, so good. Like that? Stuffed with uh, yellow split peas. This comes from the Indian then, right? Yeah. Look at the curry goat. Oh, wow. It smells it's, it's, amazing. Yeah. And when you cook for your own community, you got to be on point. Yeah, you got to be on point. Because yeah. people come in and they're like, oh, no, my goat curry is better than that. Yeah, you got to pull them away from, from that. The blood pudding comes from England or Scotland, yeah. I believe, right? Uh, mm -hmm. mm. Is it pig blood, right? Uh, no. Beef. We don't okay. use pork in our restaurants, yeah. period. We have a big Muslim community. Yeah. 
and we try to make everybody welcome. Feel comfortable and welcome, yeah. In Guyana, you know, everybody eat each other's foods, most, mm -hmm. mostly. Yeah. Uh, but growing up, we never said this is Portuguese no. or this is Irish. Right. Right. Sure. <laughs> this is all Guyanese food. This what is, is that? Is pepper pot. It's a pepper pot. Woo! That's a native uh, Amerindian mm -hmm. dish. We have the regular beef parts in there, the oxtails in there. And then we add other things, you know, the spices, and we add also hot peppers to it. The Amerindians use this extract of yucca. Mm. We call it casrip. And that's our main ingredient in there. Pepper pots. It's uh, predominantly a Christmas dish mostly, but we have it all the time here because... Um, people want it all the time. People want it all the time. Yeah. You have any um, bread? Uh, yes, we have the bread to go with, yeah. sure. As you say in Guyana, this is the boy for the girl. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Wow. Almost like a challah or like it's a... It's like a challah bread, yeah. yeah. It's like a challah bread. It's called a platted bread. When I came here, we were eating uh, Wonder Bread. This bread is one we started out with originally in my mom's home, too. My mother migrated to, to come to make a better life for us in this country. She had no choice but to leave us. Nine children living in a little shack with no parental guidance. I was only 12. My dear uncle, Neville, came and rescued some of us, took us to his bakery, where we worked very hard. So eventually, my mom got all her children here. We all lived in the basement, nine of us. She said, you guys know how to make bread and stuff, so let's make some and sell to our neighbors. The recipes that we use now are the recipes that my uncle taught us 45 or 50 years ago. The next generation, how do you make them understand the hard work and the hustle? And do they get it? Or is it, what do you think? Uh, if you never lived in poverty, you don't even know what it is. So you, you know, if you have, <laughs> you don't want to go back. Wow. The children here, they've never really lived in poverty, some mm -hmm. of them. So they know what they know. It's not their fault. They, yeah. they, they're all right, they try. But yeah. you know, they would not dig as deep as I would because I'm trying to dig from a way, yes. way down, right? That's a good way to put it. And now, by the way, you've been in business for 30 years. Wow. O over 30 years. Over 30 years. Yeah, for 40 years. <laughs> 40. Congratulations. Thanks, thanks a lot, man. And it's, the uh, food is good. This is my favorite so far. Pepper pot. Yeah, really? Especially yeah. dipping it with the bread. <laughs> and by the way, bless your mom, I'm glad we're not doing it with Wonder Bread. <laughs> I'm glad we're not doing it with Wonder Bread. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Thank oh. you very much. My name is Brian Bernard. I'm uh, one of the sons, one of the owners for Sybils, the eldest one. We make a variety of pastries, but Pine Tart is the biggest seller in that department. It surpasses everything else, and we make thousands a day. Pine Tarts is a very big part of the Guyanese culture. The crust originally came from England, and then we have pineapple, which is tropical. We would add sugar to it cinnamon sticks and other essences. We base it with milk and we put it in the oven and it'll bake for about 35 to 40 minutes. When you're taking pine tart out of the oven and you'll check to see if the bottom is baked because it'll be soggy and that's experiences you don't want people to have to go through. Growing up, I always had pine tart in my life. Both my parents worked, so I was always at grandma's house. There was always pine tarts and baked products in the home. When I do pick up a pine tart and I do eat it, it's like smelling a fragrance that takes you back to memory where you were when you first smelled that fragrance. So it takes me back to those days, my grandmother being around and my first time eating a pine tart. And over the years, now that we're in a Guyanese community, you're right by JFK Airport. So when you land, coming from Guyana, they have people that come straight from the airport. They'll come with the suitcases and everything. You could get a pine tart and it takes you back to your culture. People pass the restaurant all the time and they'll ask, what was that bacon? I smell something from down the block. And it's a good feeling because the smells take them back to them growing up as well in Guyana. The uh, Indo-Caribbean community came here to live the American dream. One of the basic features of this community, there was affordable housing. They bought a house. In the 80s, this part of Richmond Hill was dying out. 
I think the Intercrew Ribbon community you know, revitalizes this community. There's more businesses, there's more people, there's more home ownership in this part of, of the city. Inspector Dio is the highest ranking Indo Guyanese in NYPD. He's in charge of the area, including Richmond Hill. He came here when he was a young kid, and he's watched community evolve and change a lot. This is the place I was telling you about. Very nice. I'm meeting Inspector Dio at Sonny's Roti Shop. If you would ever tell me that this is a good location, I wouldn't have a clue. So it's right under the A train. Dun, 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 Sometimes you get some sunlight, and then you have probably like 100 planes just flying over. So there's very few times when the shop is not shaking. But once you're inside the shop, you're gonna be presented to the most delicious ethnic Indo Guyanese Trinidadian food you will ever get. The Indo Guyanese community and Indo Trinidadian community that culturally shares the same identity because it's British colonial past. All right, let me get a big coherent extra pepper. That's it? That's it. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? Okay. Good. You guys miss me, right? Didn't yeah, see me in a while. Sunday's Roti Shop, or unless you're part of this community, you wouldn't have a clue what a jewel of the community it is. Small businesses, family, mom and pops is so important because they're all the heart and root of a neighborhood. And when you just take a second and read the menu, it's a piece of art. I saw the, the Guyanese chicken chow mein, a little Chinese in there too, I like that. And what about fried aloo? Aloo yeah, is potatoes. And what is the banga mary? It's a Guyanese fish. I gotta have the doubles. Okay. And I think I'm gonna go for the barbecue chicken with some vegetable rice. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's Do you want everything on the doubles? Everything, yes. Okay. Just because I'm not from Guyana or Trinidad doesn't mean I don't know how to eat. You just wanna make sure you enjoy the rice. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My favorite breakfast in the world is called doubles. It is this like taco field bread that you put on chana, which is Indian chickpeas, right, stew. Then tamarind, which Indian, but also super Caribbean. And that gives you acid and sour. And then that char, this incredible pickles that has a lot of heat that stems from Southeast Asia. For any Indo-Caribbean person, it it's, makes sense. For anyone else, it's like, what's happening? First of all, you yeah. eating doubles. You got to get a, bring it to your mom. And just... Yeah, yeah, you got to eat it, eat it yeah. right. Yeah. Nice. See here, I'm getting my doubles lesson in Queens. I love yeah, that. So like eating a pizza with, with yeah. a fork and knife. <laughs> That's it. Mm. You know. Wow. It's good. What um, what are we eating? What are you this got is, here? This is bake. It's like a, a bread, mm -hmm. right? It's smoked fish. The heron is fried with onions. I grew up with herring in Sweden, yeah. but not that type of herring. No. Herring in a bake? I might steal that. I like that. My mother used to make this for me, actually, at a young age. So how was it for you, dear, when you came? I came when I was five years old. Yeah. I'm last of eight siblings. When we came to this country, we, we lived in a tenement. Uh, yeah. My father worked, saved, bought a house. Mm -hmm. I worked since I was 14 years old yeah. while going to school. So I know my father worked hard, so I, I wanted to help. You have to. So I finished graduate school. Where my parents came from, I tried to, you know, make him proud, but to, you know, to progress myself. Wow. So you're like, all right, yeah. well, I'm going to continue to educate myself. Exactly. Did your other sibling stay in the Queens area? Unfortunately, yeah. three of my siblings passed away. My, yeah. Three, three of my, my yeah. brothers I'm very close to. Yeah. And it's part of the immigrant experience. My um, brother worked 40 years. One year after he retired, he passed away. Oh. Yeah. And, and that story goes for my father, too. Yeah. Two years after he retired, he passed away. Wow. And they gave it all. Yeah. My father, uh, he's just a hardworking man. Yeah. I, mean, I remember when he retired, he had, he had over 365 sick days on the books he never used. He had a whole year he never used. of vacation he never used. It'll be a storm and he'd be 5 o'clock in the morning, he'd be going to work. He told me a funny story. He worked at the New York hospital and this is part of the NYPD came, came in. They, they saw this poor man walk in the middle of the street doing a snowstorm. They picked him up and took him to work. <laughs> That's the first positive interaction he had in New York City Police Department. He got a free ride. That's he had a free ride. That's great. I think Inspector Dio is something that every law enforcement needs more of. 
he comes from a culture that is very diverse and working in Queens. He can relate to a lot of different people. Where's the West Indian? West Indian, where from? Trinidad. Trinidad. You grew up with Dominican food? Of course. So uh, Mufongo and... Mufongo. See, where you go, to the Heights then? Where, where do we get good? Here. Here? Right here. spot right here, believe it or not. Eh? Oh, what? <laughs> you have Dominican food on one it's side, another side you have Trinidad. Stupid, I mean, we're in Queens. You, have, you don't have to go too far in Queens. I work in the most diverse neighborhood in this city. We all have a common goal. We, yeah. we, we want, you know, personally with myself, I, will, I want to see my children do well. But the same thing I, with, with the community. Yeah. I, I want to see the same thing. I want people to feel safe. Feel safe. And trust us, we, we could fight crime but we could have a positive interaction with the community we serve. Well, I really appreciate you taking time out. I appreciate, I appreciate coming in Queens. Thank you so thank, much. Thank you so much. Success. Thank you. Cricket is deep love in the Indo-Guyanese community. It brings the community together on the weekend. They have their own leagues playing against other Caribbean countries. But I've never played one, so I'm kind of nervous. But it's also going to be fun to learn something new. Hey, man, how are you? I'm good, Yudesh. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you, man. I love Caribbean food, Caribbean music, Caribbean people. Cricket is a big part of that. Oh, you're no missing the main it. thing. You're missing the main I'm thing. I'm missing the main <laughs> thing, right? <laughs> Cricket is what brings the Caribbean people together. Cricket started in England in the 16th century, and they brought it to all the countries that they colonized. Today, it's the second largest sport in the world after soccer. You can't be on the islands without having seen cricket. It's, it's their baseball, it's their religion, basically, and it's a social sport event that, you know, can go on for days. There's also that Britishness, because this is like some old school tennis gear, white pants, white shirt, and then like a vest, circa 1978. I'm like, what's happening? There are quite a few cricket leagues in New York. There are hundreds of teams. I love that. We have a lot of uh, West Indian teams, uh, Asian teams, Pakistan, India, and Bangladesh. So it's a, throughout the Commonwealth, essentially, you have it, right? Definitely, definitely. So you want to hold it a little bit loose. Yeah. Your hand going to go around, but you have to make sure this Stay straight all the time. Straight. So. All right, give it a shot. Do it again, do it. Ah, uh, that's too short. First one for real. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Come on, Marcus, come on, Marcus. Gotta hit the timber, come on. All right, get him out. Mm. You're getting better, you're getting better. Uh. I definitely can't throw the ball, although I had not one, but two coaches. Now what you're going to do, when you hit it and it passes the fielders, yeah. you're going to run. That's your partner uh, with the pads on. Umpire, you call the play, huh? Whoa. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Mostly out of fear. I'm just, like, hitting it away, and I know, I know how to run. I know that. Like, thank you, Ethiopia. Gave me that. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Double up. Again, again. Come on, man, you're letting me down. The catcher behind you, he, he's in your head the whole time. I kind of like, hey, what's up? That's what pressure do. That's what pressure do. <laughs> After cricket, it is one of the most sophisticated tailgate buffets I've ever seen in my life. You can tell, like, the big fast food chains will never do well in Queens. It's like, why would you go to a fast food spot when after the cricket game, Unk is setting up, like, the best display of food ever. Yeah. The food is very good. I have to take the first taste and then they can do after. <laughs> People definitely have some rum. It's very social and I mean all ages. It's curry chicken. Yes. A little lo mein. But we call it chow mein. It's the Guyanese style chow mein that they made out of egg noodles. Mm -hmm. That's the bacon saltfish over there. Oh, nice. It's basically like a double little or taco in a way, right? Yes. It's the cricketer's the... choice of breakfast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it, a lot of people like the 
big breakfast because you know from back in the old yes. farming community people and you like were working yeah, hard on the field heavy breakfast mm -hmm. and that would last you throughout the day and was that some herring or what is that that is bangamary um, fillet that is filleted and seasoned mm. and then uh, we put it in a bread and then roasted chicken fried chicken Guyanese people like it this way, not too much batter. Are you on a diet? <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely not. With all that work you put in outside? Yeah, yeah. But then, further down the table, it's the dessert table. The salara, which is almost like a red coconut cake. It's the, basically the bread dough, rolled yeah. and filled with coconut. Bacon, and it's bacon. colored with food color. Mm -hmm. Then there's cassava pone, which is like dense and heavy and kind of wet. Feels like a rum cake, but it's not. Cassava is indigenous people. Yeah. Uh, that's their contribution. This is dense, this will hold you. Yeah. Mm. This is pine tart. Yeah. Very flaky pineapple. Pineapple inside. jam inside. Yeah. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, black eye cake. It's, I love the name. Yes. But it's what? black eyed peas yes. ground and made into a jam on a flaky pastry. You know, it reminds me of China. Yeah. It's a lot of bean cakes yeah. and similar to this. Yes, yeah. yeah, so everybody come and they bring something to the mm. table. But what about the Brits? What did they contribute? Unfortunately, I don't think there is anything <laughs> we have here. No, well, you know what? They provided the game, right? Yes. Yeah, 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 they provided the game. Cricket for us is one place yeah. that when you come, you're gonna have supporters for your team. Despite the color, yeah. religion, yeah. Or, or any type of background. Thank you for showing me the game. Thank you. Just one thing before you go. You only come in as a batsman, not a bowler, OK? <laughs> 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 I take it. We utilize your yeah. best talent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
Uh, it's it's a fusion of my Caribbean roots yeah. mixed with my my Indian roots, cool. and at the same time mixed with my my EDM and a bit of hip hop. So the name of this track is going to be called No Passport. Oh, <laughs> that's what it's called. I like that. I like that. We had the, the Dolok, yeah. which was the you know, Indian That's elements. So cool. uh, we had the traditional Caribbean steel pan yes. in it yes, yes, for yes, that yeah. little break. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, the hip hop drum the, the break. Back piece, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then. Boom, 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 boom. That drop was yeah. just that EDM, EDM drop, you know. This is your like, this is your stew, this is your soup, yeah. this is your recipe. You could call it Caribbean dance music, CDM. C That's what you could call CDM. it. CDM. Yeah. As a chef, I always want to bring in people to a new culture through food, right? Yeah. And this is your way kind of, of bringing in people to Guyana and Caribbean culture. A lot of people don't know that Guyana exists. We need to put Guyana on the map. I'm invited to John and his family, him and his brother and sister, mom and dad. I'm gonna cook with grandma, and she's gonna teach me how to make roti and chicken curry. Hello, hello, how are hello, you? hello, hello. Mm -hmm. You are so famous, welcome, welcome, <laughs> welcome. welcome. That's how we start? <laughs> yeah. Hey, where's the kitchen? Over there. Oh, cool, <laughs> let's go. So we got two different pots. What's happening here? We're gonna okay. do the chicken, the curry in this one, yeah. and we're gonna do the pumpkin in that one. Nice. How did your son pick up to become a DJ? Where did he get that interest from? Well, his his father um, was a DJ before. Oh, nice. It runs in the Back family. In the days, yeah. But his dad did it on LPs, right? Yes. Real stuff. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. In the basement, he was like in, a, in the garage. In the garage. <laughs> yeah. He was spinning. Yeah. When did you guys move over to Queens? 84. And that was the time when it yeah. spin, right? <laughs> what is your son's favorite food? Uh, they eat everything that I cook. Sometimes I like the curry. I usually ask them what they want. It's usually lasagna. Oh my god. <laughs> I know. Do we get in some curry into that lasagna? Or sometimes, sometimes grandma yeah. walk with walk in with the curry. Yes, yes. So walk in with the curry. That's yeah. excellent. <laughs> Call me when they don't want to eat. I'll drive over, I'll come. You, got you know it. what I mean? This smells so <laughs> wonderful. So, what makes a Guyanese curry? It's all the fresh items. Yeah. You have garlic, lots of garlic. What do we call these uh, peppers? <laughs> They're called mari wee wee or wee wee. Mm -hmm. I, these are actually from the garden. Okay. So that yeah. will go in the curry. And with this curry, we would eat uh, dal puri or, or roti or rice. Regular roti. Yeah. Regular roti. What's in the dough? It's just flour and baking powder and, baking and powder. water. And water. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the key is to base it with some olive oil. Some people put something called ghee. Ghee, yes. Indian ghee. Yes. Yeah, I was like surprised when you said olive oil. That's like <laughs> definitely American. And then the key is to sprinkle a little bit of flour so that the pockets will be dry when you fold it yes. over. Ooh, whoa, 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 one more time. Slow me, slow it down. Yeah, so, no, are we slow? We're tourists over here. <laughs> I, I'm still waiting for my Guyanese green card, you know? If I pass the rote making, I'm expecting <laughs> you to hook me up. Sometimes, you know, Guyanese boys, they would not get with a Guyanese girl if their roti is not around. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we definitely want to get it right. There we go. Nice. Who taught you how to make roti? Because that's a, that's an art in itself. Um, I think my father. Yeah, you yeah. got it. Yeah, I would nice. sit on the counter and just watch him. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to say a word. Yeah. You just you just watched. So mom is gonna you're gonna clap. Yeah. Okay, she wants to clap. Look at that. So break it. I love. I it. don't clap my roti. I have to be honest with you. Well, you got a clapper in I there. I shake my roti in a mug. Oh, okay. Yeah. Drop it in there, and I shake. Oh, wow. <laughs> Comes out nice and soft. Yeah. <laughs> How often did you use a shaker? I don't use it. No, nah, we don't use it over here. <laughs> very sort of like modern mom, I gotta say that. Very yeah, modern that's mom. Smart. I'm the old fashioned. <laughs> no, no, I'm with you, I'm with you. But that's the roti dirty. looks good though. Yeah. yeah. Wow.
So right now we're sitting three generations, right? Correct, yes. I love it. Like, I'm from Africa. It's the same thing, but it, you do realize it's quite rare, right? Right, then. Why do you think that is in Guyanese culture? The culture is very closely knit. We kind of take care of each other. Without helping each other, mm -hmm. they don't thrive. It's really key to their success. But I have one question. When are we doing the dad-son show? Uh, right, when, a, when is father coming out of retirement? When, when we do a party in the basement. Okay. <laughs> basement and backyards, that's Queens. And that's also like, you made it. Dad and mom, they got their house. They moved to a bigger house. Now they're middle class. And then the kids are just like 90s kids, typical New Yorkers. But I do not think that they compromised on their Indo-Guyanese value. That's the cool thing though, because like, you know, a lot of like, Typical brown parents, they'll be yeah. totally against like us following those dreams yeah. and really taking that Beautiful. seriously as like a, a career one day. Mm -hmm. right. And they're they're very practical. They make sure that you know as long as we're in school, yeah, um, you know we're doing what we have to do, yeah. and we have a plan B, mm -hmm. then go for it. Good. So that's that's a good thing. We're very grateful to have parents like that. Nice. So your kids are all born in America, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. These and boys are all a girl, one girl. And, 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 how, and how do you guys connect to Guyana? How do you express your Chinese culture. We almost live through the stories from yeah. our grandparents and from our parents. Jai and I have never even been to Guyana. Yeah. yeah. But we feel right. so close to it because mm -hmm. of you know, how we were raised. Right, yeah. And what, what are you into? What do you, how do you keep the Guyanese culture? <laughs> well, ever since I was little, my parents entered oh, yeah. me dance. Mm -hmm. The majority of my life, I've been doing Bollywood. So, you know, and it's cool. really cool. That's kind of how I've kept my culture with That's me. That's really cool. And I've also been involved in the Indian pageants. Yeah. You know, because Guyanese people were, my ancestors are Indian, so yeah. technically my heritage is Indian as well. Mm -hmm. My yes. grandmother, yeah. she speaks uh, Indian language, Hindi. When we were growing up, we were under the British rule. Mm -hmm. We went to uh, English school sure. and we forget the Hindi mm -hmm. and the Indian language. Yeah. When, when you guys move out of the house, eventually start your own families, how much of the Guyana culture do you think you're going to keep? All of it, we everything to, yeah. we've learned. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Like, you have yeah. to keep the culture alive, otherwise it'll die out. We want to um, just bring awareness to what yeah. Guyana is right. and what yeah. the culture is. That's cool. You know, even though we don't speak with the accent. None of us do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> The Indo-Caribbean people lost a lot of things when they traveled over to the Caribbean. But we tried our very best to hold on to our culture, our religion. Our ancestors took with them their sacred books, like the Ramayana. They took certain seeds so that they could grow in the Caribbean lands. We were taken over by the British. We were indentured laborers, which are basically a nicer word for slavery. So we were not able to keep our language. Mangala, Buddha, Brahmati, Shukra, Shani, Rahu, and Ketu. We visualize the devotees. Lakshmi Singh is described in her community like the Guyanese Oprah. She has her own TV show on a local network that you can see both in Queens, but also in Guyana. And she also basically grew up in the temple. Friends of Ola Durga Mata Ki. Victory, we're saying victory to that one who has brought us here today and given us life. The Sri Lakshmi Narayan Mandir was the first Hindu Indo-Caribbean temple built right here in Queens, New York. I remember as a child, I must have been about five, six years old, my parents would go every weekend and help build that temple, brick by brick by brick. The temple is beautiful. The, the spirituality is so felt. It's filled with warmth. You take your shoes off. In a completely different world. You give them an offering, it could be food, it could be flowers, and you get blessed. Pretty much similar like going to a church in Harlem. 
How many people are we expecting? I would say about 120. Yeah. In this temple, in the basement, they got some of the best vegetarian food in all of New York City. What's the dish that we're cooking? So we're making potato curry. Whenever we have religious functions, it's all vegetarian diet. Nice. So our potatoes are your basic staple food. Yeah. It's gonna cook for like about 10, 15 minutes. And then we mm -hmm. usually take out like a portion size and offer it to the deities. Everything we do, we offer to God first. And yeah. then afterwards, we bring it back down and we mix it back in here. So it's blessed. Every bite is so flavorful. See when you have a hand in it, so it tastes like extra special. And everybody gets to enjoy it. It's, it's a cool atmosphere to like prepare food in when you get to share it with your congregation. And, yeah. You know, you eat them together. It's a different kind of family bond that you create. And I, I saw that a lot of people that, that are not from the Caribbean are participating too. It's beautiful. It's very diverse and very open. It's on Liberty Avenue, so anybody can walk in. It's part of like the melting pot, even in our countries back home, yeah. Guyana and Trinidad. Culturally, whenever you come to a prayer service, regardless of your your religious beliefs, you're always welcome. Tell me a little bit about the history of the temple. Well, back in the day, back in like the 70s, the 80s, um, people mm -hmm. would either pray from like one house to another house. Oh, wow. In the basement. In basement. Nice. And then, you know, eventually they started saving up money, doing little fundraisers. You know, no one could really afford like a construction company yeah, yeah, yeah. per se. You no, know, no. to do Uncle everything. Joe was the construction guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you had people who came together who'd say, okay, you know, we'll do the elect yeah. electrical work. But that's work. beautiful. And to sit here, and see the progress of that because once you have a place to come together and pray, it, it's one of the staples in a community, in any community. So, what does it mean for you to be connected to the temple and work here and, and carry the tradition? Well, it's super meaningful because, I mean, in this day and age now with the resources you have on the internet and things yeah. like that, books are so available. Like yeah. back when they would practice in Guyana and Trinidad, they basically had word of mouth knowledge from their four parents that came from India. So it was like, you know, a disconnect with the culture once you boarded that boat and went to these islands. And now here we are in America. Yeah. You have access to all of these authentic texts now. You have the ability to learn Sanskrit and Hindi and, yeah. you know, reconnect yeah. with your culture and understand who you are as yeah. a person. Sure. But a lot of Indo-Guyanese people come to think about this rupture that happens when we migrate, both from India to Guyana and Guyana to the United States, that there is a deep emotional, psychological splitting apart that takes a lot of time to heal and to repair. When I come here to Liberty Avenue and you know you immerse yourself in the food and the sounds and the music and the culture, there's something deeper going on, and that is a way to really heal that kind of rupturing that migration enacts on families. Hey, Marcos. Hey, man, how are you? Good. Welcome to the Good to see you. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited. What's up, Sky? How are you? How's everybody doing? My older sister, Deborah. How are you, Deborah? Yeah. Nice, nice to meet you. Oh. And that's my brother, Rick, and Chef Freddy. Yes, Freddy. How are you doing, Marcos? Walking into Raymond's house, of course. The whole family was there. We're going all the way back to the backyard, and we're going to do a bush cook. I've never been to bush cook. What is it? My dad used to take us bush cooking in, in the jungle, mm. and we'd bring all these ingredients, the rice, the mm. black eyed peas, the salted beef, whatever they go find. Beautiful. But in, in Guyana, you know, you do it with, uh, over a wood fire. Yeah. In yeah. America, we're doing it in American style. We're doing yes. it our way now, you know? We're doing it induction style. Yeah, we're doing it with yes. the induction <laughs> <around here. Yeah. laughs> I love this style of cooking because it's also open your refrigerator and, you know, what do we got? Sometimes we don't have all the ingredients. I invite you, you bring yeah. some rice. Yeah. I invite Ray, you bring the meat. Yeah. Some yeah. other guys come bring vegetables, you know? It's really like a potluck right yeah. there. Yeah, yes, nice. yes, yes. We, we got chick teal and we salt beef in there. Salt beef. Right. So you have salt from salted beef, heat from scotch bonnets. So the, the peppers are not broken, so at the end, we're gonna pop one of them to release some heat, oh. just, just right among the heat. Coconut milk's gonna make it all smooth, a little bit of water, a sip of El Dorado, you're off to the races. Tell me, 
when you came the week before, like you're packing up your stuff. Oh, How do you, man. tell me a little bit about that, coming that's, to yeah, JFK. That's, that's, that's heartbreaking, man, you know? Because yeah. you're saying goodbye to your girlfriend, oh, your, your Everybody, buddies. your neighbors, yes. your friends, people who you don't know, yeah. they come who wish you good luck, you good know? Luck. You it's might like, never go back, exactly, you know? You don't know, you know? that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Did it take you a while to adjust? Did you like it right away? No, I didn't. Right? Yeah, take yeah. you a while. Took you a while. Yeah, yeah, a couple of years. years. What did a place like Liberty Avenue where you saw other Guyanese? That must have been a place of comfort. You feel like, you know, like, like you're part of something. Yeah. You know, when you go there, you see other, you know, people, you know, from your country, you feel, you feel at home, you feel yeah. fitted. Pick up a roti with yeah. some tamarind sauce or yeah. some kalaloo or, you know. So it was an important street for you just to be connected. Yes. Right? Yeah. But as an immigrant, we always have this dialogue between the home country, the old country, and the new country, right? Sometimes when you go back to the old country, it's not what you thought it was. Yes. And, and sometimes you're just like, I would just want to go home, and yeah. home is actually America. Right. Had that ever happened to you guys? Uh... Well, it, it happened to me. I went back, and <laughs> yeah. I lost my paper, and I, I, I find myself in the American embassy, and I'm like, I want to go home. Yeah. And at that moment, I realized, like, America is now my own. And Guyana now is the place here. I visit. Yeah. And, um, I, and I learned a lot growing up there. It made me who I am in America. Yeah. But America's home. And, and, uh, and Guyana is where you, some of your memories are. And it's always something to sort of think about. Yes. Well, congratulations. You yes. guys have worked real. I'm sure the journey was not easy. It was a lot of different struggles. Yep. yep. But uh, you cooked your way through it. We cooked our way. Yeah. Loving it. Love yeah. the whole journey. Look at that. Now we got a bush cook. Right. Ah. Yes. Here we go. We're going to bring it inside? Yeah, yes. we're going to bring it inside. All right. Now. All right. Here comes the bush cook pot. All right. All right. Voila. <laughs> Good things take a while, you yeah. know? Nice. Oh. Don't bust the pepper, don't bust the pepper. Don't find the pepper, you gotta find the pepper. Why I can't find it? Me and my kids don't want to eat. There you go, young man. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, just with him. Yeah. And a little spinach. I love it. The ladies didn't have to do any cooking. That shows progress. That's good. That's good. Ready? You did good. Thank you, bro. You did good. Diana, you got good food. You got different types of food. Basically the whole world in one country. Yeah. You take uh, a little bit from every, right. every culture to make one pot, right? Yeah. It's food for the senses. Thank you, Ray. I ate very, very well today. The indo community has a really dark, tough history. The journey was not light, and the journey was not easy, but when you're with anyone from the community, it's an up experience. Pagua is a holy Guyanese festival. There is a celebration of good over evil. We go from hard winter into spring. There's a level of hope. There are togetherness. That is very inspirational to me. They also do this incredible way of saying, Here's our values from the old country. We're gonna stick to some of them that are really, really important to us. And I think you see it in the spirituality, you feel it in the music, and you feel it in the food. But they're incredible good at choosing when to put the Indo-Caribbean hat on, then take that off and say like, we're part of the larger Caribbean, and then say, you know what? We're New Yorkers, just like everybody else. It's really a great community to look at, see like, how do you keep a sense of self in this big city that we call New York City? I can remember the first time I walked on ice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, I, I, my cousin called me and told me it's snowing outside. So I put on like two socks, put on my long jumps, yeah. I think. Before I open the door and I see the snow, I was like, what's <laughs> that? <laughs> and then I put my foot inside, and then I asked my cousin, I said, yo, can we put some sugar, like some syrup, and eat this? He's like, no, no, can't do that. <laughs> yo.